The well-renowned Chinese military strategist Sun Tzu once said, the greatest victory is one that requires no battle. Keep this in mind as we discuss today China's digital currency. My name is Dr. David Waralu. And my name is Dr. Ross Stewart. And you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. Today we're going to explore the implications of China's digital currency from a geopolitical standpoint and from a global economy, global business perspective. Well, indeed, Ross, uh, it is a timely topic uh, because, geopolitically speaking, the rolling out of the Chinese digital currency will have a serious implications on uh, geopolitically speaking. And it's moving ahead rapidly. In the cities of Shenzhen, Suhao, Chengdu and Xiang'un, they are finalizing and developing the final stages to roll out the digital Chinese currency. Yeah. Yes, the uh, central government in China, in Beijing, uh, has declared that this is just a trial in preparation for the Olympics 2022. Where they expect practically all the transactions to be in the Chinese digital currency. That's correct. However, if we look at this from a geopolitical perspective, we're going to see the far dimensions as to how far this digital currency is going to go. But let's start with the closest conflict to China, which has to do with Hong Kong. And why is that important? Is because the timing of the rolling out of this digital currency, it's not a coincidence. China is waiting to see what the United States reaction regarding the creation of the Chinese national security law that applies to Hong Kong? With all the distractions in the, going on in the United States, the coronavirus, the upcoming elections, and the conflict going on in the streets of the country, President Xi is just watching as the uh, American government is so distracted by these other things. Well, in, Testing the limits. That's correct, because this is, this is a geopolitical shift, right. if you will. The wind of this geopolitical shift is going to pave the way for China to see, okay, is it time for us to roll this 100% and inform other countries whom we, deal with, we do business with that from now on, we don't want to be depending on the U.S. dollar because that's the objective. This is the geopolitical uh, uh, strategy and vision for China as to why they are doing this is because they want to challenge the hegemony and dominance of the U.S. dollar on the global market. They certainly are power and control uh, dedicated. And that's why, they, that's why they want to dislodge the U.S. dollar and put their digital currency in its place. That, that's correct, Russ, because when you add another dimension to this, it has to do with the uh, OBOR, what's called OBOR, or One Belt, One Road Initiative that was launched by President Xi Jinping back in 2013. You know, just to give people a, a perspective on this, this, this route goes through China, through Southeast Asia, through Asia, through the Middle East, through Italy, up into Europe. Europe. And that tells you right there why the rolling out of the Chinese digital currency will make more sense. This yeah. way, they won't be beholden to the U.S. dollar. And another way of telling other countries where the uh, BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative, is going to go through, it's telling those other countries that, hey, if you want to do business with us, here is where we expect the transactions to be done uh, digitally. Otherwise, we don't want, we're, not gonna, we're not going to worry about all this. And, and again, the objective of the Chinese government at this time for why they're launching this, even though they're saying is trial, is to express their challenge to the U.S. dollar. And I can tell you that the Europeans are just as addicted to cheap products and goods and services as the United States people are. As recently in Germany, they didn't have a problem in the world with things made in China compared to the more, much more costly things made in Germany. 
Well, you brought up an interesting point about the business side of this, but if I may just uh, finish up on the geopolitics and we're going to tackle the business one. Absolutely. Now, there is one other issue that I see this is going to have a major impact uh, moving forward for China, and that has to do with the fate of Taiwan. As you know, I believe Taiwan is like the red line for the Chinese. So China now is assessing what the reactions of the United States and the West towards what's taking place in Hong Kong. But when it comes down to Taiwan, I do believe that China will react militarily. It's because President Xi of China wants to ensure that it was under his watch that he brought Taiwan back to the mainland. It's going to be one of his best legacies ever. So, You know, there's the whole concept that's, that's throughout Chinese history. It's the Chinese empire. And you go to China and people talk about it. The Chinese are very proud of all the dynasties and so on. And it looks like it's impacting what's going on in China today. Mm -hmm the next dynasty. Well, you've been in China, you know, right. well, with all your conversations with the locals there and how they, they talk proudly of their, of their civilization. They, and talk, their they talk very proudly of their 5,000 years of continuous civilization and the dynasties. So this is not a foreign concept to them. That's correct. And, and this is where you see now China's, with this, China's moving forward in investing in its technology because this digital currency not only providing the, the, the base from which to launch other, other uh, enterprises, mainly in technology, as you and I know, Russ, China is run by engineers. While the United States is run by lawyers. Lawyers. And no offense to lawyers, because I do have some friends. They are lawyers. They are decent people. It's just the politicians in Washington. It's, it's a very they, different perspective. You're absolutely correct. So, so let's turn uh, our attention to uh, the business side of, of, of this. What this, emer what this rolling out of the digital currency will mean for the business community on a global level? Uh, I would really like to start with what the implications are in China of rolling this out sure. and then go globally. Mm -hmm. So what we see is that with the Chinese digital currency, privacy has almost disappeared. That means every transaction via your phone is now going to be recorded someplace. They're going to see how everyone spends their money. They're going to be able to uh, absolutely determine who's doing wrong things, that that is wrong by the defini definition of the Chinese Communist Party. Mm -hmm. They're going to be able to seize assets. Uh, they're going to be able to freeze accounts. And they're going to watch people very carefully. So privacy is pretty well gone. So the government basically is going to have a tap into what your spending habits are. And if you misbehave, all <laughs> they need to do is it's click. Excellent. That's it. All they have to do is push a button. Yeah. yeah. Now, this one from a business perspective is going to lead some other countries to think in terms of Okay, is this the way we want to do business with China? And I do believe they will move forward with that. And the reason being, Ross, is because the cheap product. I, I, I remember you and I, we talked about the bicycle example. Oh, my remember goodness. When? I went to buy a new bicycle. Mm -hmm. And the bicycle, as I'm remembering it more correctly today, the bicycle was $357. Mm -hmm. It was a nice bicycle. And it was just what I wanted. A couple bicycles over, there was one made in China for about $59, and it was the same bike. Wow. I go, this is staggering. Yeah. I want to buy American made, but it wasn't really an option. Yeah. Well, here you are talking about just an example of bicycle. I'm going to give you also the example about the iPhone. Oh, yeah. When iPhone came out, it was about, what, $700 or so? When Apple came up with it, the Chinese were selling the same product. Guess for how much? About $128. And the United States government decided that Huawei won't be able to sell Apple in the U.S. market. The price differential is staggering. Yeah. And worldwide, people are addicted to these kind of products at these prices. 
Well, it's, it's a normal human behavior. Uh, if I am to have two products here, one of them is $1,000, and same product is $500, which one am I going to go with? The one that's active self-interest. I'm going for the cheaper one. Yeah, it's human behavior. There are those who say, no, no, they, no. That's a psychology, psychologically, it's a human behavior. We tend to gravitate towards cheap prices. That's just the norm. Well, one of the issues right now is many products you can't get from any place else. It's not made anywhere else. And this is where it's going to be the challenge, especially for U.S. businesses here doing business in China. The chain, uh, supply chain. Right. I mean, if they're going to want to maintain business in China, they're going to have to subscribe to the digital currency with China. Because we need China more than China needs us. And when you look at their budget for the business budget, it's about what, $14 trillion? It's, it's actually $16 trillion. Whoa. And it's growing by a trillion dollars a year. Staggering growth. Um, yeah, and we borrow about $800 billion a year from China. So you can just see where the needs are. I mean, we would need the Chinese market. And if American businesses do not want to do business with China, China's not going to uh, lose sleep over that. They just moved to Germany, uh, do business with German, the French, the Italians, the Canadians. And everybody Austria, in between. And everybody in between. That's, that's the normal transactions. And here is, here is one, one another point, Ross, that I want uh, our viewers to know about. And it has to do with the Internet users in China. Oh, this is big. Yeah. Because China's moving with the digital currency... It is because the internet based economy is what's giving the Chinese government the go ahead to move into that. And when we look at the numbers, what is it? How many people have iPhones and do the work that way? Well, Something like 857 million? That is correct. That is correct. So when you have this kind of base that's using internet, obviously moving with the digital currency makes perfect sense. And where the key to all this, why does this make more sense? It's because this, this digital currency is backed by gold and the central, uh, the central bank. They're one step away from backing it with gold. Uh, there's some international complications with it, but the mm -hmm. Chinese are working through those. So this will be backed by gold. Uh, that's interesting. Interesting enough that yesterday I came across an article uh, indicating that the G7 the seven industrialized countries are backing now the central banks to create a digital currency in response to what China is doing. In other words, they are seeing when, where this is going. And you and I, five years from today, we're not going to be surprised at what China is doing, digitally speaking, when it comes down to transactions. It could be a number of other countries are going to go the same route. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that one, Ross, because China is already cut a deal with uh, Russia, India, Pakistan, and Iran, that their bilateral, not a multilateral, their bilateral trade will be conducted in the Chinese currency. So you can just see now with the, electron, with the, uh, with the digital currency, they're going to move on the global level. And this aligned exactly with China's vision for 2030 and 2049. The anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Communist Party. The hundred years. That is correct. And this is where China is moving with all of this. So it will behoove our uh, uh, businesses in the U.S. to start think about what's need to be done. Because the rolling of the currency, the Chinese currency, is coming whether we like it or not. And there is a, a lot of work being done in the United States. It's just that China has moved ahead so rapidly that catching up will be a couple of years. Yeah, and their investments in the technology sectors, including the AI, artificial intelligence, the uh, quantum computing, even in space. As a matter of fact, just last uh, month in July, China launched a mission to Mars. We didn't hear much about it. Usually those kind of missions, they go in three stages between the, uh, the orbiter, the lander, and the rover. Mm -hmm. China did all three in one. <laughs> so it just tells you how fast they are moving and on steady footing because, the, again, 
China is built by engineers, while the United States is, is run by attorneys. By attorneys, so. Well, the, the ability to predict accurately uh, is really challenging because so many moving parts. Uh, so what we have the capability of doing is, for, in selected situations, we can gather high quality information and present it to people, but it has to be targeted. It can't be widespread. As I say, so much is going on and it's happening so rapidly. Yeah. And we have to ensure that U.S. businesses uh, have a grasp and understanding of what this shift means for their not only survival, but also uh, their productivity and also uh, what it will mean for the whole country as a whole. First survive, then thrive. Quality information is the key. That is correct. So, Well, I hope uh, our viewers enjoyed this podcast and found the information very useful. Till next time.